Today I just wanted to talk about the RSS feed reader that I use. Now if you don't know, I found this out about 5 minutes ago, but RSS stands for Really Simple Syndication. Basically it's a way to set up an XML feed that contains things like podcasts or news or videos or just a bunch of different content that then you can just distribute to people and they can just download and download the pieces from that actual feed and just view it however they feel like viewing it. So it's basically a way to distribute content over the internet without having to rely on a website to do it. So there's a bunch of different RSS feed readers that you can use. Some are more focused on podcasting, some are more focused on news, and some are just, I guess, general tools. So I'm going to be using one of those general tools, and I'm using one called Newsboat, which is a fork of an older program called Newsboater. The only difference is that this one is actually maintained. So let's just go over to my main screen and have a quick look at it. So first up, you're going to want to install it, obviously, so sudo pacman-s news boat. Okay, install that and the first thing you're going to want to do when you actually run it is obviously add in some actual RSS feeds. So I've already got a couple in here. So I've got one for the Arch Linux news and I've got one for Hacker news. But let's say we wanted to add another URL in here. Like let's say we're really interested in Joe Rogan for example. Now there's two ways we can do this. The first way is we can actually go to the config file which is in your .config directory or wherever it is that you actually have your xdg config set up to go to and it'll be in the newsboat folder. I don't believe this folder is made by default so you're probably going to have to make it before you can actually use it. And there's going to be two files in here that you care about. So there's the config file and the urls file. Both of these I believe you have to make yourself. So the urls file is obviously going to have the urls in it. Config file is going to have the configs in it. We'll dive a bit more into the configs in just a bit. But first up, let's look at the URLs. So there's two ways we can actually go and add URLs to this. One, we can do it from the program. If we look at the actual program again, as you can see, there's a little thing down here to bring up the help menu. And if we look through here, there's a key binding in here. I'm not sure where it is, it's right here. This one right here. So if we press capital E, this will let us actually go and edit the URLs. So we can do that and that brings up that file. Or the other way is that we can actually go directly modify this file. Doesn't really matter which way you do it, both will work. So let's go add a feed to it. Like let's say we are really interested in Joe Rogan. We'll copy this link here and then we can go back over here, go to my URLs file and pretty much all we do with Newsboat is just paste the link in and it'll work perfectly fine. Save that. And then I don't believe there's actually a way to reload it while you're in the application. You have to quit out, go back in and then the feed will actually load up. So if we press R on this, then it will try to load up everything in that feed, or at least the recent stuff that's actually in the feed. And as you can see, the name of it's changed from being the URL to the actual name of the feed. Now I was testing this a bit off camera, and this wasn't really the best choice to make. Because let's say we wanted to look at, for example, the Chris D'Elia episode. The problem is it's not actually noticing the audio link. For some reason, it's only noticing the link to the actual web page. So we can open this up in our web browser. Being an Alacrity, I can just click on this, but if you actually want to use the binding within Newsboat, by default, it is bound to O. So we press O and that'll open it up in our web browser and that will take us to the actual video page. Now, if you put this RSS feed in an actual podcasting app, it will actually find the audio link, but for some reason, Newsboat doesn't seem to be detecting it. I'm not sure what's going on there, but it is detecting the image link not sure what's going on with this exact podcast. I think this is a bit of a problem with this specific feed because I have tested it with my uni lecture feed and that works perfectly fine. I think we'll go and test that actually. I've gone and grabbed the RSS feed for my research methods class. Let's just have a look at this one. If we go into this and let's say we go to the first link in here. Now as with before, we can open this up in our web browser and this will actually take us to a video file. So if we open this up, as you can see, it will try to actually load this video, but if you're trying to watch a video from a terminal application, you don't really want to have to open up your web browser to do it. There are some other ways you can do this that might be a bit easier. And one of those ways is to set up a macro to open it up in something like MPV or VLC or why you're using VLC, just use MPV, it's easier. And basically what we can do here is I've got my macro key set up to be colon. So if I press the colon key, as you can see down the bottom it says macro. And then it's basically just waiting for the key to press along with this. I've got open MPV set to W. And basically this is going to take a little bit of time to load, so I'll cut back to it, but it should open it up with an MPV. 
The problem is that this lecture was actually broken and nobody bothered to fix it. So as you can see, there's no signal, but it is actually trying to download the video file that was attached to that link. So if we wanted to set up a macro like this, how would we go about doing this? It's actually pretty easy. So let's just go look at the config file. Actually, I'll bring it up in LF just so you can see where it is. It is in that folder I showed you before. So in your .config folder, or as I said before, wherever it is you store your XDG configs, go down to Newsboat, and let's have a look at the config file. So we have this line in here. So macro w is basically how you set the key for the macro. And then the command that I'm running is set browser. Set browser is basically the command that you run within Newsboat to pretty much just set the browser. And I'm setting that to MPV and then passing in the URL argument. Then I'm running the open in browser command, and then I'm setting the browser back to my default, which in this case is Brave. Now, I'm not gonna go into a deep dive into the macro syntax in this video, but basically it'll let you set up pretty much any of these commands in here, and also a bunch of others, all of which I believe are described in the actual man page for Newsboat. So if you wanna deep dive into that, that is where I would recommend looking. But as you can see, it's pretty straightforward how it works. So you just run the command, then semicolon, then the command you want to run, then semicolon, command you want to run, semicolon, so on and so forth. It's pretty straightforward how it works. I'll get back to the config file in just a moment, but as you notice up here, I'm rebinding a bunch of keys. And there's a very good reason I'm doing that, and that's because the default bindings for this program are a little bit weird. So I've just set it up to be a bit more Vim-like, so I can move around with J and K to go up and down. I can go into a feed by pressing L. I can go out of a feed by pressing H. I can also go out of a feed by pressing backspace. I can go into a feed by pressing enter. I think that one is set up by default, but the backspace to leave isn't. And I can also go back with Q. And if I'm on the home page, then Q is basically just going to quit. Let's, before we go into that config file, let's actually look at something that really works well on a CLI application like this. And that's a news feed. So something like, for example, the Arch Linux news feed. This basically shows any time that, say, like a manual intervention needs to be done or anything that really happens with the Arch Linux project. So let's say we wanted to look at the future of the Arch Linux project leader. This is pretty much just a set of text and it's pretty straightforward how it works. This is kind of the really basic stuff that a RSS feed reader is really good for, especially one that's designed to work on a terminal like this. Obviously, you can do more complex stuff like, say, with Hacker News. Hacker News, generally, it's not really articles on Hacker News. Generally, it's just links to other places. So this will open up a link in here. And then we press O, that'll open in our browser. Obviously, if you wanted to use a terminal browser, you don't have to use something like Brave or Firefox. You could use W3M. I just use Brave because that's just what I like to use. So yeah, this works as you'd expect. And this link down here, I believe takes you to the comment thread. Yes, it does. It takes you to the comment thread on Hacker News. So as you can see, I don't use too many RSS feeds. I kind of just have my Arch Linux feed and Hacker News. But you could use a bunch of others. And if you're really getting into RSS feeds, I think that Newsboat is probably a good place to start, especially if you do like a lot of other terminal applications. Let's just have a bit more of a dive into the config file. And as you notice, I'm doing a bunch of color configuration here. And that's because by default, Newsboat is a very, very boring application to look at. And it's really easy to fix that though. So for coloring just basic UI elements, you can use the color command. For doing regex of things that are actually in an article, you can use the highlight command. We'll get to that one in just a moment, but let's go over color first. So to do a color, basically you write color with the American spelling, obviously, because everything's American spelling. Then the element that you want to color. So all of this is explained within the man page. So I'm not going to go deep into what all of these terms actually mean. It seems pretty straightforward most of the time. For example, the background is obviously the background. The list normal unread is basically just the list when it's unread. Pretty straightforward. Basically, what you do after the actual element you want to color is the foreground color and the background color. So for example, list focus. I've got that set to color 16 as the foreground color and then cyan as the background color. As you can see here, color 16 is a black of some sort and then the background color is cyan. Pretty straightforward how that works. Now the highlight one is actually kind of interesting and this is where you can do some really interesting coloring. And the way this works is basically you do highlight 
the thing that you want to activate the highlight on. So I'm activating it on articles because that's all I'm using Newsboat for. And then you actually do a regex, which is really cool. So say we wanted to highlight the word feed, the word title, or the word author, and we want to highlight it cyan and the background color to be default, and then it to also be bold. Works as you would expect. Or we want to have, say, any numbers be highlighted in magenta, have a default background color and be bold as well, or have links be in cyan. So as you can see, you just do basic regex expressions and you can basically highlight stuff exactly the way you want it to be highlighted. So if we look at, say, the future of the Arts Linux project leader, we've got the title up here being highlighted in blue, the feed being highlighted in cyan, the author being in cyan as well, the link being in green, and then these numbers in square brackets basically being in magenta. So that, it works as you'd expect pretty much, nothing too crazy about that. Now, one thing I didn't mention when I was setting up the key bindings is that all of these key bindings here, they actually work really well with a newsboat. And what I mean by this is newsboat actually dynamically generates its help menu. This is a feature that I really wish more applications have. And what I mean by this is, as you can see, all of the keys that I've set within my config file have actually come up in here. So backspace, for example, isn't by default set up to be quit, but because I've bound quit to backspace, it now shows up within the help menu, along with all of the other keys that I've set to quit as well. So H and Q, or L is set to open. And there's some other ones in here as well. But as you can see, it's pretty cool that it regenerates the help menu based on what you actually set in the config file. So the help menu is always up to date with whatever you've got set as your keys. So if you say, remove all of these keys and rebind them exactly the way that you want them to be rebound, then they work pretty much as you'd expect. Then unlike other applications, the help menu doesn't just become completely useless because now it's actually gonna show the keys that you've set up rather than be hard coded to whatever the developer sets. So let's say we wanted to do something with this one right here. So open in browser and mark red. Let's say we wanted to add a binding to the letter capital Z for this one. Pretty much what we would do for this is go over here, put this in here. So bind dash key, capital Z, the name of the command we want to do, and that's all we have to do. Save this, quit out of the application, reload it, and go into here and press question mark. And as you can see, that is now bound to that action. So it's actually regenerating the help menu, which is really, really cool. And I wish more applications did this. I know it's a bit of work to get working properly, but it does actually make the help menus really, really useful when it is set up to work. In case you were curious how I was finding those command names within the config file, basically they're all in the help menu. And I believe they're also documented within the man page as well. But unless you remove the key, it's already gonna be in the help page. So you can look here as well. These commands in here are basically the commands that you use within the bind key commands. So say we wanted to bind hard dash quit to something, all we'd have to do is do bind dash key, the letter or the key we wanna bind it to, and then hard dash quit. There's no like weird names that don't match up with the rest of the application. It's just the names that are in here, which also makes it really easy to set up the configuration as well. So I think that's pretty much everything I want to talk about for this. Obviously there's like a bunch of other stuff that I could talk about as well. Like I could go through the man page and look at all of that, but I don't think that's too interesting. Or I could talk about how to set up a bunch of different macros, which I might do a separate video on, but this video is already kind of getting a bit long winded. So I think I'll save the deep dive into macros for another video if you guys think that's interesting. And yeah, I think I'm gonna end it there. But before I go, I just wanna thank my patrons. A special thank you to Nathan, Andrew Road, LQ, Larry, Ray, and Zilva who help make this channel possible. Without their support, I wouldn't be doing this as well today. So if you wanna support the channel on Patreon or you just wanna have your name read out at the end of the video, there'll be a link to my Patreon down below, as well as some other support links like my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel or you can give me a donation on PayPal or however you want to do it. Obviously, you don't have to if you don't want to, but the option is always there. I've also got my social links and my alternate video platforms. Also, remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.